Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag Monday, yet again. Um, and get straight into it. This one is from Michael Gregg. Thank you very much, Michael Gregg, from Mountain View, California. I've been to Mountain View, lovely place. I had uh, dinner there uh, once. I took the um, train to Mountain View, and that was uh, from Silicon Valley. That was fun. And... Uh, so hi to all my viewers from Mountain View, California, or Silicon Valley. Even Well, Mountain View is not part of Silicon Valley, but by the way, uh, what have we got in here? It's, um, if you want a spoiler, <laughs> here we go. It's got a uh, t-shirt and two broken hard drives. Cool. By the way, if you're uh, noticing anything different with the audio and video this time, uh, it's because I've left my main ca uh, camera, the Canon HFG10, at home. I forgot to bring it, so I'm using my backup uh, camera, the Canon um, HFM uh, 400. So, slightly different. Anyway, um, here we go. T-shirt. Oh, I love T-shirts. I'm running a T-shirt uh, contest at the moment. Um, so I'll be uh, crowdsource funding a uh, t-shirt that will be coming shortly if you haven't seen the blog post. Roz Future... I can't even pronounce that. Is that, a, is that a turtle? Is that a... No, it's something. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Extra large. Oh, so extra large may not fit me very well. If, <laughs> By the way, I'm like a um, usually a small to a medium. I prefer my... Uh, T-shirts are uh, tight fitting, so it's the 50-50 shirt, it's American Apparel, the 50-50 shirt, there we go, and let's have a look, okay, it's cool, I don't get it though, is there something, uh, Michael, well you just thought it was a cool t-shirt and you wanted to, uh, I, I don't know, should I google that, Ross, I don't even, I'm hopeless at pronunciations, Ross Futi, Furichi, oh god, I give up, I'm hopeless, <sighs> I'm an engineer, yesterday I couldn't spell engineer and now I are one, um, and it's got a couple of little doves down there, I don't know, seems pretty cool, thank you very much Michael, that's a t-shirt, a couple of, oh, oh, here are the hard drives, SanDisk, oh hang on, we do have a note, TurtleBot, oh here we go, Pays to read the notes first, folks. And of course, I took a look at the uh, Turtle Bot with um, Gavin. Um, I don't know, a couple of dozen episodes ago. While I was at the Y on Field Day, and here it is. Dave, I saw Evoy Vblog 429 where you gave us a look at Gavin Smith's Turtle Bot. Turtle Bot was originally created by my wife. Oh, there you go. Melanie Wise and her co worker, Tully Foote, while they were at Willow Garage. Ooh. Sounds exciting. I was excited to see that turtle bot on the show. Unfortunately, we do not have an extra turtle bot to send you. Oh, that's all right. No worries. Though I do have a few turtle bot stickers and a t-shirt. Awesome. That's what it's all about. Uh, t-shirt for Ross Future. Ross is a oh, robot operating system, of course, and it's defined by Ros.org. Okay. Ros provides libraries and tools to help software developers create. Uh, robot applications. It provides hardware abstraction, device drivers, libraries, visualizers, message passing, package management, and more. Ros is licensed under open source BSD license. Uh, Ros, uh, I can't pronounce it. Can somebody help me out? Ros Future is an old version of Ros, but this was my shirt that was available. Hopefully it fits. Also enclosed some small hard drives I had for a camera used to own. They're both micro drives. Yes, the old IBM micro drives. I thought the 340 meg micro drive in 2000. Cinder yeah, that's when they died. Uh, I think I don't think they went much longer than that. The um, IBM micro drives they um, sort of you know um, <laughs> sort of were uh, taken over by uh, solid state memory and uh, uh, stuff like that. So I seem to remember paying something around um, seventy cents per megabyte. Whoa, do the math. I paid bath. I paid a lot for that drive at the time. It was quite large and very fast. Yeah, well, the march of technology. I'm afraid. Yeah, I can remember when I bought my. I paid. 300 bucks at the time for my first 20 megabyte hard drive or three four hundred bucks or something for a 20 meg hard drive uh, uh, One is 340 and the latter is four gig uh, purchased in 2005. Oh, they're making them in 2005 or six really Wow um, Yeah, I will do a uh, teardown of them probably not today. I might do it for a uh, teardown 
Tuesday tomorrow, but I haven't got time tomorrow. It's the anniversary with the wife. We have to uh, uh, head on out for a uh, lunch, so may not get time with the radio show and everything. Feel free to omit this part from your show. Nah, it's warts it all here. Gavin said you need to go visit his hackerspace like you said you would. I know. I've been to the Melbourne one twice. I've never been to the Sydney one. Ridiculous. <laughs> to incite you to go visit the hackerspace, I ship Gavin a bonus t-shirt. <laughs> For him to give to you once you make the trip there. The bonus t-shirt should fit you better than the future t-shirt. I think that's how you... I'm, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Future... Few, no, that's not right. Eh. Ah, oh, you mongrel, enticing me to go visit. All right, I'm going to have to go visit the hacker space. Thank you very much, Michael from Turtle Bot. Cool stickers and an awesome T-shirt. Turtle Power. Check it out. We have a Seagate one and an IBM. Ah, uh, genuine IBM micro drive. I didn't know Seagate actually made uh, these micro drives. I thought it was the exclusive domain of um, IBM, but. Uh, Maybe they did. There you go. It's a uh, compact, fits a uh, compact flash uh, slot, of course. And these were, you know, they, they still haven't made um, hard drives this uh, small anymore, really. Not uh, mainstream uh, consumer uh, stuff anyway. But yeah, um, solid state just killed them, I'm afraid. So these will make uh, fascinating teardowns. Thank you very much, Michael. That's awesome. I'm going to call it 30, I think. I think 30 is the way to go. No worries. And if you want to send stuff in, send it to that crazy Aussie bloke, Borkham Hills BC, PO Box 7949, Borkham Hills, New South Wales, 2153, Australia. Not Austria or Germany, which we've got in this case. Hi to all my German viewers. I do have a lot of them. Uh, Germany, I think, is the third country behind the uh, US and the UK in terms of uh, viewership, I think. And it comes from, um, oh, goodness, oh, Rumsit Labour EV. Sorry if I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, from uh, Mannheim in Germany. Haven't been to Mannheim. I've been to uh, Hamburg and Lübeck before. Lovely little small town Lübeck and uh, Hamburg, which I absolutely loved. I'd go back there any day of the week. Hamburg has more bridges than Venice, if anyone is interested. And we have a university in uh, Leipzig, by the looks of it. And another looks like a university or some sort of... Um, uh, government uh, building or something like that somewhere in Deutschland, Germany. So let's crack this sucker open and see what we have here. And oh, look at this, we have a kit. We have a kit. Oh, no, it's not a kit, it's fully assembled. Oh, yeah, yes, it is a kit actually. We have a note Rums at Labour. <laughs> I am definitely pronouncing that one wrong, folks. Please correct me on that. Australia, not Austria. Beautiful. That pisses off a lot of people. I love it. <gasps> Introducing the hackless. Hi Dave, while watching the EV vlog, I noticed that you don't wear any electronic jewellery. No, sorry, uh, not really into that sort of thing. <laughs> so, very 1980s for a guy to wear uh, jewellery, I think. So, uh, you know, each to their own. Um, Right up there with mullets, I guess. Um, so here's one hackless for you. The hackless is our first high volume project of the hacker space, Rumsit Labour. Ah, there you go, it's a hacker space in Mannheim in Germany. If you're going to build this, absolutely make sure you read the instructions. Yeah, I usually don't. I'm hopeless with that. Okay, I will. Because you're using a dip package for the microcontroller display, and the microcontroller need to be soldered at the same. Huh? The display and the microcontroller need to be sold at the same time. That's bizarre. Please note that enclosed build instructions are written in German. An English translation of the guide is available at hacklace.org. The firmware on the microcontroller is pre-flashed. Cool. There's a desktop application available to create custom animations. All right. So, oh, right. It's just going to be like one of these little dot matrix things that just hangs around your neck and uh, and probably power, yeah, powered from a uh, coin cell. 2032 coin cell and it flashes up lots of patterns. Oh, gonna have to build that one up. Definitely. Um, uh, we also put the USB serial converter. Ah, right, and some jumper wires in case you don't have some. A few notes about the project. Single sided board to keep the cost down. Excellent. Well done. Uh, symmetric component alignment. Ooh, that's why you have to solder in the microcontroller and the display at the same time. Might be solved for the later version. And that's interesting. I'm going to have to check this out. Um, it's aimed for beginners as their first soldering project. Uh, we made a special device to sand down the rough edges, see enclosed photos. 
enclosure is actually a playing card box. Ah, yes. Yes, that looks playing card size. <clears throat> Uh, the project was inspired by Tiny Matrix from Tiger Up. I hope you like it and wear it. Excellent. I have an unfinished project called the Matrix Duino. I'm going to have to dig it out. Hang on a sec. Yeah, sorry to hijack this one, but uh, before I forget, I'll just uh, show it. This is my micro RGB Matrix Duino, I called it. It's a um, 8x8 um, RGB LED Matrix. Um, Arduino compatible uh, controller. One of those projects I started and uh, um, stopped on a uh, rainy day. I never got uh, uh, finished, unfortunately. You can see the uh, dual uh, header rows that the um, uh, lead matrix uh, solders into, and then uh, uh, you know the boards can butt up together and do you know well. You can put them in uh, strings, long uh, strings of boards, and um, uh, yeah, that was the uh, that was the idea behind it. It used a um, I forget. It's been that long ago. Hang on, it's an AT Mega something or other. I can't read that. But uh, yeah, and then it used the uh, TLC 59R47 uh, LED uh, driver plus, uh, you know, some MOSFETs and uh, stuff on there to drive the LEDs. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, never finished the sucker. Oh well, them's the brakes. But uh, yeah, you can see like there's a male header on this side. There's going to be a female header on this side, and you could like butt the um, uh, modules up together so they would because this board was exactly the same size um, or slightly smaller than the lead module itself so you could butt them all together and put them in uh, complete strings anyway that was the matrix duino so um similar sort of thing i guess is this one rgb um i don't know we'll find out oh, look at that happy smiling chap i love it with his nerd necklace yeah Status statement. Future versions of the uh, hackless might be able to read your mean? What's your mean? And displayed in real time on the display as shown. Little happy face. Look, little smiley face. Absolutely brilliant. So, I don't know, if you smile, it'll, uh, it'll smile. If you frown, it'll frown. If you're shouting, it'll shout. That'd be awesome. So this looks pretty funky. I am definitely going to build this one up. I might do a, a uh, build video just i don't know soldering the thing together and ranting on but there you go there's the um uh, animator tool for it very nice you can set up your animations the speed the delay play and it it displays it um on the screen exactly as what you're going to get on the thing unfortunately yeah it's not rgb it's just uh red by the looks of it because the rgb ones are uh, quite complex but that folks is the hackless so if you want one go to hackless dot org very cool i like it aha this is what he means by soldering at the same time there you go you put your chip down through there and the holes are slightly bigger that's quite novel i like that that is really quite nice and then you solder that on put that on top and solder it through at the same time that is really quite uh, novel it's it's not the first time technically i've done something like that but um i really have not seen that in a um like a you know a product like this before that's that's really quite nice I, that's really well engineered they chose the right pins on the microcontroller to be able to do that fantastic very clever i like it thank you very much and i don't think that one was actually uh signed with a name there you go if you want to uh, scan that, folks, and get a video of the hackless in action, I don't think that was some. Didn't say who it was who actually sent it. It's just the uh, Rimsit Lieber uh, hackerspace. Definitely check it out. Hackless.org. Cool. And next up, we have O Werther. Thank you very much, O, from Cedar Park in Texas. Nothing's bigger than Texas, is it? Well, I'm sorry, but the state I live in, New South Wales, is bigger than Texas. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have electronic cables. Oh, very light. Incredibly light. So uh, let's check out these cables. Hang on. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. That should do it. Bubble wrap. And... Let's have a look. We have little cables. Ooh. Ooh, they look funky. Hang on. 
Hi Dave, I really enjoy your blog. Keep up the good work. I recently purchased a few probe accessories for my MSOX um, 3054A. Oh, if you've got one of those for your own, you're doing well. And I thought I'd buy a few more and donate them to your lab. Nothing special, but useful. Uh-oh. You, you want that package next? All right, we'll do that one next. Hang on. <clears throat> you may keep the accessories if you can figure out how to trigger the scope on I <laughs> ITC address higher than OX7F. Oliver, thank you very much. Oliver, RF engineer from Germany. Oh, Germany? And uh, bloody Germany again. Bloody US again. Oh, of course, please keep the accessories anyway. Thank you very much, Oliver. Let's have a look. Oh, man. Funky. Wow. Look at this. Yeah, where do you get them from? Who makes these things? I don't think they're Agilent. Oh, check out this, folks. Little mini grabbers. Look at that. Sorry, I don't have my... Uh, oh, no, actually, I do probably have a macro lens for this uh, camera, I think, somewhere. But, oh, that's pornographic. Look at that. That is fantastic. Who makes these things? This is brilliant. There you go. I do have my macro lens. I knew it would come in handy. Uh, Meccano in Japan, as in Meccano, as in Meccano sets. I don't think so. Um, we welcome... <laughs> We welcome the request. Welcome without an E. We welcome the request. I love it. There you go from Meccano in Japan. These little mini grabbers. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. And this is very cool as well. Down in there, designed to uh, slip your pro at the end of your probe into that, which then converts it into um, these two. Um, little hooks which then you can plug into your micro grabbers so that is definitely going to be very useful that's going straight into the little uh, accessory kit box on the top of my scope thank you very much Oliver very useful stuff love it and by the way for those wondering how I get the uh, close-up shots in my video here are here's the macro lens I use it's an Optica high definition times 10 macro lens this is the 58 millimeter one for my main uh, hf g10 camera and this is the one i just used then it's the uh, smaller one it's exactly the same but it's just got a smaller uh, thread size for the 52 millimeter diameter for my smaller camera and these are very cheap they're like you know i don't know 20 30 bucks or something like that really quite cheap and the quality on them is absolutely brilliant so if you want those uh, close-up shots I highly recommend one of these puppies, not the cheap brands, get genuine Optica. And I've actually been uh, shooting uh, this video up until now with this Vivitar um, HD uh, high definition uh, wide angle lens because this um, HFM 400 camera isn't as wide, I think it's 38 millimeters or 40 millimeters or something, not as wide angle as the 30 millimeter wide angle uh, I have standard on my Canon HF. G10. So I basically um, have this one fitted all the time to this uh, backup uh, camera and it gives me uh, the exact same 30 millimeter uh, wide angle as what I've got on my bigger uh, Canon camera. So there you go. That is because uh, that's the whole idea. I mean you stick it on there and uh, it becomes wider angle. There you go. I haven't screwed it in of course but that's the idea. And this will probably be the last one. Sagan uh, pestered me to do to open this one, so let's have a look. I've had this one for quite some time. Sorry, because I know I think I know pretty much what's in it, um, and it will require a separate video. It's from uh, Black Box uh, Consulting here in Australia. They're the representatives uh, for the product in here from Peter Boxall. So thank you very much, Peter, and we'll uh, crack this sucker open. And this one, folks, has been much requested, actually. Much, much requested. So Black Box Consulting are the local distributors for... Ta-da! Oh, if I can get it open. Lots of people have been asking for it for the DigiLent. Ta-da! Analog Discovery Portable Analog Circuit Design Kit. Um, it's been very uh, popular, so I've heard. Um, it's a dual channel oscilloscope, function generator, 16 channel logic analyzer, dual power supply, all powered from the USB, and it's got some funky software. So I'm not going to have time to uh, power this up and uh, try it now. Unfortunately, we will have to uh, wait for another day, but let's 
let's check it out. And uh, I've heard some good things and some not so great, and they're, you know, not not so great things, but just some, you know, niggly problems with it and uh, stuff like that. It's got a headphone uh, port. Oh, it's got some, does it get hot, does it? <laughs> I don't think so, not power from the USB. Um, it's got a micro uh, USB down there, very nice, and a whole bunch of uh, headers. It's a dual row header, so there's tons there. So it looks like we have uh, 16 channels, T1, T2. Whoa, I have to read the manual on that one, but uh, that's just a, um, it's a nice little uh, plastic case. I rather like it. I think we can actually crack it open, though, folks. And there it is, DigiLint Beyond Theory. That's what's inside the analog uh, discovery. I'm going to have to get down and have a look at the uh, part numbers. There's curiously uh, four little trimmers down there. That's very interesting. Obviously, uh, two channels like this, probably eight uh, channels each, because this is a 16-channel thing. So let's have a look. And that's the back. Double-sided load. Whole bunch of analogy stuff. So it's pretty dense, pretty uh, pretty populated. You can see all the uh, all the bypass caps down around here. They look like bike, are they? Hang on, I can't see them. Yeah, they look like tiny little 0402 uh, bypass caps all surrounding one of the main. Is that a Xilinx FPGA? Let's take a look at it. And yep, it's a Xilinx Spartan 6 FPGA, the 6 SLX16. Um, it's not a huge uh, density device, it's just like 16K gates or uh, something like that. It is one of the latest generation Spartan 6 BGA, of course. That's why you saw all the bypass caps on the top. And there's more bypass caps on the bottom. The reason they don't have them directly on the bottom is because this sucker is not like going to be a uh, 6 or 8 layer board. So it's harder to um, fan out all of the traces and keep the bypass caps in there. So they've had to sort of group them out of the way of all of the routing paths coming out of this thing. And if you flip it open, they've done a very similar thing down in here. So that's not an optimal uh, layout in terms of uh, bypass caps. But, uh, you know, it's 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 going to work. Um, but on, you know, really high performance uh, stuff, you'd be routing, you know, that thing out on a uh, six or eight layer board or something so that you can get your um, as uh, tight a loop as possible with your uh, bypass caps on your power supply. Uh, one of the things about using this backup camera, by the way, is the screen is much lower resolution than the other one. Like um, with my other Canon camera, because it's got like a one megapixel um, LCD display, I can actually read the things on the LCD display as I'm actually filming them. This one's uh, not quite as good, although it's not bad with the macro lens, but when I zoom out, it's, uh, it's no good at all. There's an analog device, it's AD9648. You can go look that one up. I'm not going to do it right now. A, uh, a uh, QFN type package there. What else have we got? We go oh, FTDI uh, interface FT232 standard. So it's basically, is that it? Is it a serial interface only? If that's the case, then it's going to be quite slow in terms of uh, data transfer. If it's, um, oh, that was Sagan moving the tripod. Um, it's going to be slow in terms of, uh, uh, you know, actual data transfer of this thing in terms of real time. So um, uh, that's uh, probably a bit disappointing um, if they are using serial only interface instead of uh, genuine, uh, like a full on uh, USB interface. But anyway, there's some uh, ADG, there'd be analog switches, AD, ADG 612s. There you go, there's some trimmers down there. And that's about all she wrote. What's that on the bottom? That is a TX DAC. There it is. It's an AD9717. That's the DAC on this thing. And there you go. That's the analog discovery. It's all in the, uh, well, there's quite a bit in the hardware, but uh, ultimately it's going to be all in the uh, software, really. So this requires uh, quite a few hours of use and uh, playing around with before I can... Uh, uh, give you a uh, thumbs up or a thumbs down on that one, but that's a nice little bit of hardware. Don't mind that at all. So that's Mailbag Monday for this week, and uh, I'll try and uh, do it weekly to try and uh, catch up 
on uh, all the backlog. I've still got two, four, six, seven rather large uh, packages sitting there at least. So, and they still uh, keep coming in. But uh, by all means, um, continue to send stuff in. People to Mailbag Monday. It's one of the most popular segments. I don't know why. I guess it's like uh, Christmas time every time I open something, right? For everyone. Beautiful. Anyway, if you like Mailbag Monday, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to discuss it, as always, the EEV Blog Forum. That's where you need to hang out. Catch you next time.